All right, so here we are. We're back at the Real Estate Roundtable with IPRG. Just as a company, we recently launched a New Jersey division. We saw a tremendous amount of opportunity in the Jersey market. We saw a lot of similarities between what we think is going on in New Jersey to what we saw happen many years ago in Brooklyn. Um, so that's what we're here to talk about today is just New Jersey in general and the investment landscape out there. Um, we brought on a new partner who's going to lead our charge into Jersey, Yanni Marmaru. So welcome, Yanni. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Happy to have you here. We've been trying to put this together now for a couple of weeks, so glad glad we were able to finally make this happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be great. And so Yanni is a managing director here at IPRG, and he's a partner leading the, uh, the New Jersey team. So, so um, welcome. Jersey boy. Uh, grew up in Jersey. I lived in Jersey for Jersey City specifically for... 15 years before my wife kidnapped me and dragged me out of Jersey City. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, you know, when, when my grandparents came here, Jersey City was the first place that they actually settled into and then kind of, you know, really? moved throughout Jersey. Yeah. When was that? Oh, uh, gosh, 60s. So they came from Greece. Yeah. Yeah. And it was funny because I, you know, you hear all these stories about stuff like you could have bought. Oh, you know, my father loves to tell me I could have bought this, I could have bought that, five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, and I always look at him like, "Well, you're an idiot. You should have." Because <laughs> unfortunately, we can't see it today. But um, you know, the landscape of like how this whole area has completely blossomed, um, and it's happened rapidly over the past, you know, five to ten years. But um, yeah, I think it's just it's it's. Very smart of you guys to see the opportunity there. It's emerging. Yeah. I think it's catching more and more press now. I think a lot of people are understanding the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, I think we could talk about all the reasons why this push is happening from, yeah. from New York to New Jersey. So. so yeah, we definitely want to do that. So so talking about Jersey City, like let's just compare it to Brooklyn real quick. Brooklyn, you have like all these, you know, neighborhoods, Williamsburg, Brooklyn Heights, Park Slope, Flatbush, Brighton Beach. East New York, like yeah. Brooklyn is a huge market with all these different trends and, and neighborhoods. So when we talk about Jersey City or just these surrounding areas in general, like what what are the different areas when, when you say like you, you spent time, your grandparents moved to Jersey, yeah. like where in well, Jersey? Well, even me, I was kind yeah. of like a gypsy nomad <laughs> okay. all throughout Hudson County where, where I lived, even in Jersey City. So, you know, I lived I lived in downtown. I lived in Paulus Hook. Paulus Hook is, I used to say, it's like the poor man's West Village. You know, they got beautiful brownstones. Um, I, I sold back in the day a brownstone for, uh, on Hudson for like $9, $10 million. Could have bought the same exact brownstone in Paulus Hook uh, with a fraction of the taxes for, you know, $1.5 mm -hmm. Not to, today, it's probably closer to three, but that's just, you know, they have Jersey City Heights, which is, is a completely different market than the downtown. Um, there's all of these new emerging neighborhoods that we're starting to see that have really started to take shape the past five years. Bergen Lafayette, which has gotten super hot. Uh, five years ago, if you drove or left your car in Bergen Lafayette, there, there was a chance you might not come back and see it there. Mm -hmm. Now it's one of the hottest, uh, most, uh, I don't know about most expensive, but you know, $50 rents, $60 rents. Uh, approaching wow and yeah and that's happened relatively fast that's and, like to the the right of journal square right yeah so similar to journal square you kind of and, and you know you, why is all of this happening why are these neighborhoods shaping like what's driving it it's all transit you know and you look at like kind of what's out there why are people moving out there um from when they installed the light rail it went right past bergen lafayette so it just kind of made sense to this will be the next neighborhood and as the light rail continue to expand, like we're doing a lot of work right now in the west side. That's the last stop on the light rail, and it was one of the you know, last neighborhoods to start to blossom. What they're talking about now is actually trying to extend the light rail. And you know, we were talking before about Newark and places like Harrison, you know, once again, light rail. So And Path and Harrison, right? And Path. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So Path, all right, yeah. so let, so let's talk about this. Cause I, I don't know if all of our listeners, I think we have a largely New York City based uh, listener base here, yeah. but um, and I, I know a little about Jersey City, but not as much as Steve and Yanni and potentially Luke for sure. Mm. But but when we're talking about transportation, so I know that we have the Path train, yeah. which goes to World Trade Center. Yep. Then you shoot out and you're at Exchange Place. Yep. Th then you have Grove Street. Yeah going into Jersey City, and then you have Journal Square, yeah. and then it goes to Harrison and Newark. 
Correct. Um, Luke and I were looking at like just times and distances between these places before the start of this conversation. And the furthest away is Newark, which is 22 minutes from the Newark Path Station to the World Trade Center. On the closer side, um, Journal Square is 10 minutes to the yeah. World Trade Center on, yeah. on the path. And uh, Grove Street is seven minutes to yeah. the World Trade Center. But when you start saying stuff like light rail, like how does all this play into the whole transit yeah. and, and the growth of the, of, the, of the area? Well, you know, Bayonne is another perfect example. Like the light rail extends out to Bayonne, and now you've seen this whole, you know, mass development that's been happening over the past couple of years out in Bayonne. But what, what is the light rail? Like, I, I kind of know what it is. It takes you around it's Jersey, but yeah. doesn't, it doesn't take, the light rail doesn't take you into New York. No. You what have to it, take it to a path train yeah. that then takes you into New it's York. A, it's a pretty convenient way. I mean, look, the thing with people that live in Jersey, they become hostage to their vehicles, to their cars. Okay. You know, w like from the retail side, when people are, are, are building retail, they always have to incorporate parking. So parking becomes such a huge issue because everyone is using their cars to get around. So whenever you install some type of transit system that makes it easier, obviously, to travel where you don't have to take your car or you know pay $400 a month or $500 a month to park in the city, it's going to become attractive. And it's mm -hmm. going to create opportunity for people that, quite frankly, don't want just don't want vehicles. So as you look, it, I mean, people always ask us, you know, because obviously we – we, we do a lot in Hudson County, and we're, we're working outside the market, but people are always asking us, what, what are the next neighborhoods? Like, where, what's the next Jersey City, or, you know, or the next area where it's going to be developed? And uh, I always tell them, just follow the trains, you know? Follow the Easy. actual trains or just follow, you know, where the, what, you know, what's happening. You're saying the light so, rail as well? The light rail yeah. is the train? So the light rail, it's basically like a trolley, right? Exactly. It's, it, it's, it, that's all it is. It's cheap. Is it it's, convenient? It's very convenient. It works well. It's you, you know we went to an event uh, a couple weeks ago and we were all going to Uber and we said let's just you know the, the light rail is going to take us there. Let's just try it and see what it yeah. does. Yeah, yeah. It was so efficient. How so long easy. did you wait for it? Uh, we we waited literally. I think we came outside of Exchange Place. We walked the block, got on the light rail, went out to the west side, and we were you know it came within. A minute, like we were Sounds actually like every eight minutes. Right? Yeah, like that. we were we were almost running to it. Because like, so in in New York City, they refer to these as like two fare zones. So obviously, you have the subway that takes you to like where you need to go. Yep. But there's markets called Flatbush, where you know Central Flatbush. There's no trains that go down there, so the people would have to take like the two three or the four five, and then hop off, and then hop on a bus either you know across on Church or down on Utica or whatever it is, and that's a two fare zone, which is like far less desirable because you have to take the bus and the subway. Yeah. Um, is that like what the light rail is like? It sounds like the light rail is far better than yeah, what I'm describing it's there. Just, it's just another easy, now look, I don't have any statistics uh, and check the numbers. I don't even know if uh, New Jersey Transit or uh, PATH who operates it, uh, they, they, I'm sure they put it out, but a lot of this has also changed yeah. with what's been going on with offices, right? But, um, I think it's it, it's just another way for people to make it convenient for them to travel. Mm -hmm. And what what they're starting to realize is is how much people are starting to utilize it. So now they're they're incorporating more stops like the light uh, rail. Yeah, got it. Yeah, they are. It splits. It goes into different directions. It goes into Hoboken. It goes past Hoboken. Goes all the way down the water to like past Weehawken. So it's it's a it's, it's a big system, and if you look at all of those areas where there's quote unquote a stop, they have blossomed. There's and it's all been, tied into the path. Uh -huh, yeah, well, yeah, it's all exactly. Yeah, okay. it all ties into places where you can exactly get the path. So yeah. like Hoboken, you can get the path that brings you into New York. Ho and, Hoboken, just to interject real quick, we checked before this this conversation from Hoboken to Fourteenth Street. Yeah, is a thirteen minute path ride. Yeah. Which is unbelievable. Yeah. And, and 14th Street is the third stop in. So and it I, stops, I think, at 9th Street and Christopher Street before that. Yeah. And I invite, I mean, I've been to most of these stops, and I invite anyone that's an investor in, in Brooklyn or Manhattan to go to some of these because obviously most people have been to Hoboken. Hoboken looks just like the West Village. You have <laughs> phenomenal retail, you have brownstones, you have tree lined blocks. And, and stops like, you know, Grove Street. I mean, Grove Street yeah. looks just like a Cobble Hill Carroll Gardens location. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So, I mean, if you haven't been, it's it's really eye-opening to, to go there and see what 
across the river there, has. There's this thing. I mean, look, I live yeah. in New Jersey. Yeah. I'm from New Jersey. I live well, in Hoboken. Okay. All people from Jersey live in Hoboken. You, it's a rule. If you're from New Jersey, you <laughs> it, well, it has to happen. <laughs> we get some Jersey stereotypes going here. No, but oh, it's yeah. true. But, but what I'm saying is, to, to Luke's point, I pay half the price to live in a nicer neighborhood and get to work quicker than most people that live in parts of New York. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a whole there's a whole another story, you know, about that with what you actually get yeah. for what you pay for, and certainly, especially on the rental side, you know, with the amenities and the new buildings and what they're putting in there. It's uh, new. We, we so put, much of it's new. Yeah. We can spend a couple. When you're hours when you're yeah, when you're that. in downtown Jersey City or Grove Street, like it's just a and Hoboken. New, it's a new beautiful city. Yeah. Like the the tall buildings, like the so newness of it, Jersey, how clean Jer- it is. Jersey it's City space. was really kind of. <laughs> I, I, I want to say it was like the armpit of of the area mm-hmm. because everyone lived in Hoboken. All the bars, yeah. you know, for years. It was, that was the neighborhood when you were young, or even if you were like starting out with a family, but you kind of mm-hmm. didn't want to leave, or, or you, you worked in the city, you didn't live in Jersey no. City. You lived in Hoboken. I feel like people he, lived in Hoboken before it, they even lived I, in Brooklyn. Like I met Way Steve, back yeah. like 20 years it ago. It depends. That was like the thing. It depends. If you were coming from, like, we have, obviously have a couple guys from like, uh, you know, Westchester County and Rockland County, they don't want to live in Hoboken. No. You know, Hoboken was always home to, like, a lot of the Jersey people that were kind of coming out of college or doing whatever because yep. of the scene. If you were coming from, like, Long Island or whatever, you wanted to live in the city. You yeah. didn't want to live. So it was a big jump because at, late at night, if you had to take the pass train, there was always that kind of stigma of, like, now we got to go back to Jersey. Oh, for Bridge sure. and tunnel. Bridge and oh, tunnel. Yeah. We, <laughs> I mean, Brooklyn dealt with that for yeah. years. Yeah, Steve, yeah, exactly. Steve crap about it every day. But <laughs> it's funny, like when, when Steve and I started brokerage over 10 years ago, like he always, he lived in Hoboken. You had that, that condo. Yeah. We talked about Hoboken. I went there. Yeah. No one talked about Jersey City. You didn't no. talk to me about investing in Jersey City until no, like no. 2019. No. 18. No. So that's interesting. Like, yeah. Yeah. But it's it's blowing up. Like, I, I still, like, we, we went to the Grove Street path the other night for your event. Like, yeah. Grove Street is serious. Oh, 100%. Serious, and it's low rise. It's 100%. not like exchange place. I would compare it to, like, Battery Park, huge buildings. Like, yeah. it, all luxury towers. Like, Grove Street's, like, low rise. Carroll Garden, Park Slope-esque. Yeah. Like, real. It's real. It's even, awesome. Even my yeah. friends. So this is, like, a perfect story, right? My friend whose place that was... Um, Shout out to Kenny Caulfield. Thank you for hosting us. It was a beautiful event. First party. Great Great wings. So I think like it was maybe 10, 12 years ago when I met him and we were walking around Grove Street and he was with his partner and I said, he was looking for an alternative. He had uh, Tonic and he had Mercury Lounge over in Kipps Bay and he was like, I I just want to get out of the city, rents, whatever else. So he had a very successful place in Hoboken. So he's like, I want to, I want to expand. So I was like, come here, come take a look at Grove Street. And it looked nothing like what it looks like today. And he had a partner with him, and his partner, whose name I won't mention, totally talked him out of it, steered him away from it. So what happens a couple years later, you had Porta, who was down in um, Perth Amboy. I, I I've been to a Porta, and what's that? Porta Asbury Park. Asbury, Asbury Park. Park. Sorry. Yeah. Asbury yeah. Park. I always get those two yep. confused. I always get those two confused. So Asbury Park. So they came into Jersey City. They built this beautiful pizzeria. People started going crazy. And and Kenny comes to me and he's like, I can't believe I missed the ball on this. Like, I should have taken that space. Because some guy took the space where he is now and and, and it was totally a show. So I found him a space down the block. He ended up opening up what is now the Ashford. And it became like the number one spot. Mm -hmm. And then what you started to see once he did that was that a lot of other businesses started to open up. And North Avenue, where he was, was was vehicles driving. It's now all pedestrian. So they're they're cutting it off. They're making it more friendly. They're making people want to come down. And and I, you know, the mayor there, people can say whatever they want about him. He had a vision on how to improve the city, and I think he's done a great job. Exceeded. Like I, I, from an outsider, exceeded all expectations. Just like a pro it, development. Now, if you compare it to New York, it's like. Crazy. But even even when I first started in the business in like 2012, one of the first things I learned in Brooklyn was if there's a train and there's brownstones, invest. Right. Hundred percent. Exactly Absolutely. what Jersey City yeah. gives you. And there's a it's what every good area of Manhattan gives you. It's yeah. what everything gives you um, in it's, Brooklyn. And when there's a clean slate, lot of land, it, and, it's just going to prosper. And like so what Derek too. said too, it's which which is crazy. I mean, you, like let's compare, right? Like every, the hottest areas of Manhattan, Lower Manhattan, below mm-hmm. 14th Street. Brooklyn Heights, Williamsburg, these areas, they're all a 10-minute ride from Lower Manhattan. Let's, let's go through a few more right? numbers yeah. because we have. Go, go through the um, numbers because it's interesting. So, yeah, uh, the Bedford L, mm-hmm. 
heart of Williamsburg to uh, to Union Square, which is the best part of Williamsburg. There's a lot of other which good is stru- Union Square, which is the yeah. main stop. It's not the first stop in Manhattan. Yeah, right? that's a seven minute subway ride compared to Grove Street to World Trade Center. Seven minutes. Right. Let's keep going. Um, Barclays in you know core Brooklyn yep. to um, to Wall Street down here. Ten minute subway ride. Yeah. Um, you know, similar to the to the distance. I mean, Journal Square to the World Trade Center, ten minutes. Um, Jefferson L. So even on the far end, the Jefferson so L. Bushwick. Bushwick. That's prime Bushwick, which is still hot, very hot market. Very hot market, and arguably hotter than Jersey City. Or well, you, when you say Jersey City, the thing about Jer- yeah. it's huge, right? Yeah. I would compare Bushwick to like a Journal Square, but I think Grove Street is, is on a Williamsburg probably level farther along than Journal Square. Probably in yeah, some, a little bit. in some ways, but anyway, Similar Jefferson rest. L. to Union Square, seventeen minutes. And here we have um, Journal Square, again, to World Trade Center, 10 minutes. So yeah. the proximity is there. And I think that was our interest in Jersey to begin with. Oh. Is we saw what happened in Brooklyn yeah. and just the explosive amount of development and rent growth. And it was all based on proximity to lower Manhattan. And for us, we looked out at Jersey City and we're, we, we saw there's a big arbitrage where, like, the rents for a long time weren't there. But, and the market overall didn't seem like, like at least Journal Square area, it didn't seem like it was there. Yeah. But the proximity was there, and we're just like, how yep. yeah. is this area like still look like this? It was almost like going back in time to when you first went out to bed back in like 2010, and you could see and feel the potential, but it wasn't there. Yeah. That's how I feel when I walk around Journal Square. It's like you yeah. see and yeah, feel but, it, yeah. but the thing is, but if, it's you just not the, if you read the news, in, if you read the news in Journal Square, which is the craziest thing about Journal Square, you have. A level developers yeah. building 800 and 1,000 unit complexes. Guys that are not building in Brooklyn, you guys like Elliot Spitzer, yep. Kushner, mm-hmm. all these. Silverstein. Silverstein, Silverstein yeah. owns the, the, the Freedom Tower. I mean, he's building in Journal Square. Yeah. These people aren't even building. Silverstein has never built a building in Brooklyn, I don't think, right? Podcast guy's telling you not to bang the table. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, why are they he's building. Getting excited. Why are they building in Journal Square? I feel the excitement. It's good. I mean, it does, it do, I'll let Yanni go into it more, but yeah. because he's selling a lot of development sites. I think it's the blank slate. There's so much land. It's like a Williamsburg. That it, you can pretty much. And there, there's really. I mean, tell me about the zoning, but yeah. I think there's like various. Right. You can build towers in the middle of nowhere. Like everyone's looked across the river in Journal Square and seen the three white towers. Yeah, Kushner. That, that are literally. Yeah. Any idea how tall those are? I think they're seventy stories, something like that. I mean, yeah. Yeah, how tall these? They, they, they vary, but yeah, they, they get up there. But like, yeah, they're. I they're, mean, they're, they're like skyscrapers yeah. standing out in like the middle, in the middle of nowhere. Of nowhere. Yeah. So it's like. Well, what's that's what you're saying. The other thing that's interesting about those towers. Is how they all filled up. Yeah. Now, really? There's there's stories. Tell us more. <laughs> there's stories about the actual people that are living there. If you go there and you and you, and you feel it and you see it, a lot of it is younger. Uh, you know, th- there's been some schools that they brought in as tenants to do this mass leasing to take what kind huge of school? Like college? Actually, I, I I wasn't part of the leasing plan there, but it was my understanding it was like Columbia Business School. They had a huge block mm. of uh, students that they signed a deal with. And if you go there and you, you hang around that part of the building, you can, because, you know, the building is kind of integrated with where Journal Square is. Mm-hmm. The way they thought all of this out was they wanted the buildings to kind of flow right into, like, where the path is. Yeah. And they have work to do on that because it's still the path train around Journal Square is a little <laughs> sketchy. But it's coming together. It's, it's all happening. Um, I think one thing that you started to talk about, and, and once again, okay, so you have the transportation that's there. Mm-hmm. But the other main driver for all of this development was was the zoning and the, the specific zoning that that happened there. It was it was funny. I was friends with a kid. He went to my college. He was on the planning board that helped actually write the zoning plan for that. He's no longer with. He's no longer at the planning board now. Mm-hmm. But it was called the um, the Journal Square 2060 plan. And what it what it did was it literally went like block by block, and it started to carve out areas that said. Here you could build towers. Here you could build eight stories. Here you could build six stories. And yeah. once that started to happen, you just saw massive appreciation. In they changed values. the zoning out there. Yeah. They changed the zoning uh, in, in most of the markets mm-hmm. where you see all of the development. So they have like their old standard, like R2, you know, uh, NC neighborhood commercial. But the places that you see, like where we've done a lot in the West Side, or we're, we're, we're now doing stuff in Canal Crossing or in Bergen Lafayette. I mean, there's probably, I don't know, 20 redevelopment plans inside of Jersey City in each of these specific neighborhoods that all have different types of zoning. Mm-hmm. So from, a, from like a planning perspective, hands down, they were, they, they saw the opportunity. They were in the, 
the forefront of a lot of these, you know, different municipalities that said, you know, we need to get uh, proactive and progressive with our zoning, and that will push all of the development. We, we didn't want to come in when we started, when we were at our, our last firm and, you know, prior to, we didn't go in saying, oh, we want to sell a ton of development sites, right? Like that wasn't our, our thing. We looked around, the guys that were selling all of the residential, the guys that were selling retail, office, whatever, very competitive. Every, everyone's trying to do that. I went to school uh, for planning and zoning when I went to uh, Rutgers, uh, the Blaustein School. So a lot of that was kind of integrated into what I learned. My grades sucked before I went there. I went to Blaustein, and I ended up like graduating with high honors because I just I loved it. I started wow. to absorb it. It's amazing. So when I started to look around and I started to have conversations with a lot of these developers, they were like mom and pop shops trying to sell these development sites. Didn't know anything about what they, they just knew it was a piece of land, and they would just throw a number at it, and somebody would come and bite. Mm. We were able to really sit down and unlock value and figure out here is the potential. And I think a lot of that came just kind of from my background before. Started off as a commercial appraiser, moved into, um, you know, brokerage. And a lot of that was all driven by these redevelopment plans. That, that's what drove us into specific markets. We, we started to look at a map and say, wow, this area has all of these, these properties. They haven't built to their potential, but the zoning allows for them to. Let's go start to target some of these and talk to the owners and see what's going on. And, and, and that's, that's what's been driving it. What's amazing, it's almost like they planned micro cities within Jersey City. It's so big. And being someone that I've always just been interested in North Jersey, just because, you know, being in commercial real estate, I always thought there was a lot of potential. And there's areas of Jersey City right now that five years ago you couldn't pay me to even want to visit. No. You know, even like right on the Holland Tunnel, like they're just building cities because yeah. of the zoning you're talking about. They're yeah. allowing for these high rises, yeah. and then they're putting the infrastructure around it, and yeah. it's just because of the transportation. Yeah, and you know, initially on, <clears throat> they were very, um, they were very prone to giving pilots. You know, that was a big term that was thrown around. Now the city has what does that mean? The, so a pilot is basically stands for um, payment in lieu of taxes. So a developer would come in and. We talk about this now, and, and then you <laughs> explain to me how this doesn't make sense for a city that's going through what they're going through right now. So a developer will come in, they'll, they'll put down a, you know, it's all negotiated, a huge uh, payment towards the city. That city, when you pay your normal real estate taxes, it gets divided up. So the city gets its portion, but a lot of it goes to the county. So the city actually doesn't see a huge portion of it. I, I don't know the exact numbers. I want to say it's maybe 25, 30% of that money that just disappears you know it's going to feed other county initiatives mm -hmm. so when you make a pilot payment as a, as a, as a mayor or as somebody that has a stake in your 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 city council members that that payment goes to you you're not sharing that with the county so for the schools and for anything else you would think that it would be people would be more prone to, to seeing these come in there was huge pushback by the city council over years it's all of this development it was kind of a, a good way for um I guess for them to ratchet their bases and say, you know, development's bad, even though it's helped shape the city, <laughs> even though it's helped create and make things better, but development is very bad. We don't want to see these guys. Now, they did mess up. They gave a lot of pilots to developers that were on the water that probably didn't even need a pilot to make sense. I mean, if we can't see it right now, but those towers that are on the water are, are some of the most successful, highest rents, even comparable to Manhattan. Rents, right? Definitely the views, what you get oh, there. The views must be amazing. It's awesome. They shouldn't have given those guys pilots, but they needed something to kind of start it. So they did, and then immediately when they started to get opposition from a lot of the the base that didn't understand what it was doing, they pulled back a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So pilots right now are almost non-existent in a place like Jersey City. You go into a lot of other markets. Newark, uh, being you know, Newark is the largest city in New Jersey. Jersey City is the second largest. Newark, they're still giving pilots. Yeah. They want to see more development happen there. So these are like tax incentives to get developers to, to develop. Yeah, well, kind and, of like what we had in New York. And, and the, in, a, in a way, I mean, some kind of tax incentive. The other thing about a pilot is what it does is, so there's the payment up front that kind of, you know, what, what it does is it controls your expenses. So as a developer or any kind of property owner, you just want to have certainty. You don't want to be hit mm -hmm. with some crazy uh, increase to your taxes because it can completely destroy every your, your, your all of your assets so certainty is huge what we saw last quarter in in jersey city is they were getting a lot of funding from the federal government and um 
uh, from the state to for the schools. The schools are a major issue there. And uh, mm -hmm. when COVID, now we're kind of working our way out of COVID, they just said, okay, we're done. We're, we're, no, we're no longer giving the, this aid. So they had to fill a huge gap in the budget. And the only way they could have done that, they didn't come up with any other kind of creative solution, like maybe we should start to cut some of our salaries or cut some of our expenses. They just said, we're gonna raise everyone's taxes. So fourth quarter, people saw a 32% increase in their property taxes. That was last quarter, essentially. Two well, quarters. we heard so, that a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> what happens is the way the way it works is the they come, you know, they, they set the budget or they determine the budget throughout the year, and then they actually look and see what they need to make up in November. So that's why people got hit with it. And there so was, they increased it 32%? I actually think the, the amount is actually larger. It's probably closer to like 42. Like a nerd, I go through, I read these budgets just to kind of see like what is going on, like where is this coming from? And the number that people felt in their pockets was closer to 32%. So let, let's just say that someone owns an apartment building, a 20 unit building, yeah, and their tax bill is like 70,000 or something. Yeah. That basically went up to, um, it's like 100 grand? Yeah, exactly. That's a major it's, swing. It's, it's, yeah, it was. We saw that. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so like, that's a big issue for the market then, no? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, the problem is the <laughs> that, that issue has, isn't resolved. So meaning like next year, when November comes again, and they have to uh, figure out the solution to what to do with this budget that keeps bloating, uh, they're gonna they're gonna have to figure out another solution. Any idea how, they, yeah. how they're calculating the taxes on these buildings? Like, why are they... Like, like, what's it based off? Like, in, in New York, for example, you have to yeah. file these things called real property income and expense yeah. forms, so it's yeah. your RPIEs, and basically they assess your your building on an, an apartment building yeah. based off of your RPIEs, and then your tax bill is a, a percentage of the income that it generates. Yeah. So you can basically understand what your tax are going to be based on your income. If you want to have one of the busiest jobs right now in New Jersey, it would be a um, working as a... Uh, property tax lawyer <laughs> yeah <laughs> getting all of the uh, working through all of these uh, reassessments grievances uh, you know New York has different terms than Jersey does of course for, for trying to fight like uh, basically you know abatements and whatnot but so, do you know how they how so they yeah, calculate the taxes or what what it's assessed off see of? the thing is this when you increase the tax rate it affects everybody so it's not like your yeah. property got reassessed yeah if you had a, a single family home or a vacant piece of land or one of those office towers Everybody felt it. It went across. It got distributed across to everybody. Now, the people that didn't feel it were the guys that had pilots, were the guys that had their mm -hmm. set. How long is the pilot? It depends. It depends on what you negotiate. It depends on what it was. So that's why developers love them, because they're like, listen, I'm coming into here. Got it. I am, I'm, Interesting. I'm building something yeah. that's going to contribute to this neighborhood. So I need to have a fixed cost I need to have something that's fixed so that was the other part of the pilot that I didn't really get into the they're different they're you know in every single municipality they negotiate different ones in Newark for example they'll give you a 30-year pilot and it'll fix your taxes it'll be stepped up off of uh, you, you know wh whatever different years so which municipalities are we referring to when we say different municipalities like which like what are the ones we're talking about so you follow the train line a good friend of mine is uh, the mayor of Rawway and Rawway gives, you know, they have, I think they're, they're starting to back off, but there was a ton of residential development. They're a stop on the uh, New Jersey Transit line, and they were given pilots to incentivize developers. That's on New Jersey Transit. In. Yeah. So that's a completely different method that, of that, transportation. That's like the train system that brings you into Penn Station. Like the Metro North for exactly. Westchester and Connecticut. Long Island exactly. Yeah. We have the we have Jersey exactly. Transit, we have the exactly. path, we have the um, light rail. The light rail. Yeah. So are we talking about, are we talking about these further afield municipalities as well like yeah. are there like is there like 10 or 20 municipalities that are you all know, given pilots like we hawk in some of the areas that were around here a lot of a lot of these cities up until recently were given pilots and in got it besides the payment that people were making they were also because there's a huge affordability issue that people always talk about they were also it depends where you are they were asking for you know depending on what it is to have a, a certain number of units in your building become uh, affordable so that was the other trade. You know that. Mm -hmm. you give, give us 10%, give us 20%. It's never the same. It depends on where you are. But that was the other kind of, you, you, you know. Uh, Is that like catch. an AMI type of calculation? Yeah. That's what yeah. we have in New York. Exactly. And Anyways. it depends. You know, they, they say moderate income, yeah. middle income. Got so, it. you know, 80%. So mm -hmm. what they're what they're doing now in certain in cities, like in Jersey City, is they're, they're making it, um, they're calling it inclusionary housing. So 
in some of these redevelopment plans, they're just making it mandatory. Mm -hmm. Nope, no pilot, but you still have to build affordable. So it's 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 getting dicey. Things is, is it a challenge to keep up with all these municipalities and all their like different like ways they do stuff and like you said Jersey City raised the taxes, but I'm assuming the other municipalities did not raise the taxes thirty three percent. So no. it's like I feel like just as you describe it, it's a lot of yeah. different things going on here. Yeah, that's why you brought me in. hundred uh, percent. <laughs> Jersey's complicated. It's not like New York. It's yeah. literally well, so every. At least it's New York City. Like, it's kind of like across the board. Like West New York, like I know very little, but I know like West New York, pretty, it doesn't have a path, but it's pretty good market, right? Like it's close to Jersey City, right? It's behind Hoboken. Keep going, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but they don't even have rent control there, right? You can well, charge whatever no, you want. West no, New York. Yeah, yeah so we get into that too. So the way. The Bayonne. Bayonne, no. Yeah. I used to use the, um, I used to use the. The, the Blasio analogy. I, I'd say, you know, you guys have the Blasio here in New York and and, and, and Cuomo. I was like, I was on the subway with him yesterday. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, I know. In, in Jersey, I, I would say we had uh, I think it's 500, 525. There's so many municipalities; they all have their each individual rent laws. Now, Jersey City is adjacent to Bayonne. Bayonne is vacancy decontrol. So Love a that. tenant moves out. You want to increase the rent. You want to make improvements to bring it to market. They were there, you know, an old couple that was paying eight hundred dollars a month, and whatever they moved on in life. Uh, but the market is now closer to sixteen hundred. Renovate it, rent it, you're good to go. Do they become any kind of rent control at that point with that new tenant? No. In? Well, it depends. I so mean, if that tenant's in the first sixteen hundred, yeah. Is there rules as they're there? There's always rules as to uh, how much you can raise a tenant's rent okay. year over year, unless it's rent exempt. So Got in, it. like you've heard these stories. I was talking to a lawyer friend of mine. Uh, yesterday and he said his daughter is living in downtown Jersey City in a new building and they just raised her rent year over year six hundred dollars and she's a school teacher mm. he's like I gotta get her out she's gotta go she can't afford it but that is a new brand new building and That's what happens is when you build new construction you get a this is a state program it's not a, a municipal program you get a 30-year exemption from rent control so if you want to raise your tenants rent yeah. after that lease is up uh, you know a hundred percent you're allowed to you, you're allowed to go to market and that, that qualifies for 30 years, and then once the building hits 30 years, then you have to go by whatever the rent control laws are there. So, um, yeah. You know. what, what I've been curious about with the new construction development you see across the river is there's a lot of similar neighborhoods in, say, Brooklyn to Jersey City, um, even, say, Brooklyn, Newark. What kind of land prices are you seeing? Yeah. Because so, the rents are similar. I'm curious how it stacks up to New York land. I don't understand how land gets priced here in New York. And um, you're saying like the perfect so example, much, right? Right? It's so much. Perfect example, you look at, you look at, look at it's, it's Bushwick, insane. for example, uh, a small lot, you probably get in 200 per foot, yeah. where the average two bedrooms paying about 3,000. Right. There's plenty of markets like that in Jersey City. Yeah. Um, say probably, that it, what are they paying? So, like, a say a, a two bedroom is getting called $3,000. Right, yeah. Um, off the water we, we in Jersey have, City, there's similar we markets. Got that, yeah, <laughs> but like, so the land there is going for about two hundred to two twenty five in Bushwick. Yeah. In Bushwick, yeah, it's not. What would you say it's going for in Jersey I, City? I mean, I'm just thinking in my mind, just like off when, the cuff. When you say that rent, yeah. right? I try and compare it to a market where we we're renting yeah. for the same. So you could go to Bergen Lafayette. You can go Somewhere. even to the West Side right now. Yeah. And, and right now in the newer buildings, you're talking about new buildings, new right? Buildings. New buildings. You can see those similar type of rents. Everyone likes to bastardize when they talk about land like price per unit. It's a okay. terrible metric. Please, everyone, stop doing it. <laughs> because if if I'm selling you a building that has 100 units and it, the price per unit and they're all that. studios, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the same if I sell you 100 units and they're all three bedrooms. No, price per unit, it's outdated. So I like to look at price per square foot, which you guys... So you just said they're $200 per square yeah. foot. Buildable square foot, like Buildable. on a piece of land. So exactly. in that, it comes out to like 150 per unit, if you want to use that. Yeah, number. okay. So fine. Uh, whatever metric you want to use, price per buildable I think is more relevant. And when you're seeing it, the stuff that we're selling, it's, it, it just blows my mind when I, I back into these numbers. You can get land in Jersey City comparable rents for forty dollars a foot, which is well, different. Me. But why though? For, you can't even get land in the Bronx for Doesn't forty dollars a foot. The, the thing is, and you know, I obviously worked at another place that was very active with in, in, in New York and Brooklyn. And I used to ask them the same question. The one thing they used to say to me, and it still didn't make sense. And uh, I think it's changing, right, with all the changes in the laws. Where they, where they were talking about the, 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 the taxes in, and how much better they are in New York, right? Yes. Because the taxes, mm. you can see taxes in our pro formas at somewhere between, uh, hopefully, you know, 12, 15%. 
and it was my understanding that in close to thirty, probably. It depends. Or, yeah. When you say this number, you saying percent uh, okay. percentage of the gross income? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, your EGI. So, so twenty percent, like you're, well, give or take. Well, right. obviously, there's protected tax classes in New York. Like yeah. things over under under um, ten units, it's different. But yeah. things over ten units. People say the city wants to take like twenty to twenty five percent of the gross yeah. income. Yeah, which is what we're seeing in Jersey, right? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. similar. Yeah. Maybe thirty. So I don't know. I, I mean, to, I, I don't right. know the answer. Mm-hmm. I don't know the answer. I think maybe it's starting to change. So, I panicked during COVID because I thought that land prices were going to precipitously just drop. Right, everyone was going to stop building. It was the exact opposite. Yeah, everyone started to come. Land land values did not drop. <laughs> land values rose. And now what we're starting to see recently, finally, is that land values are starting to drop. And it's all because of interest rates, yeah. which is a whole nother discussion on how mm-hmm. that's really affecting these developers from getting shovels in the ground. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're, <clears throat> what we also saw, which was crazy, was the amount of people that flocked from New York to New Jersey, to Jersey City. I could talk about a number of you know, specific developments that <laughs> leased up in record time where the developer had to stop, pause, and say, I think we need to increase our rents, yeah. you know? They, they were starting off renting parking spaces for $100, $125 a space. By the time they were finished with their lease up, they were up to $250 a space. Mm. So it was just, the demand was insatiable. Um, the amount of units that are still planned, that are still supposed to be built in Jersey City, is is unbelievable. I, j- I j- you know, just looked, Journal Square alone, I believe there's... 4,000 that are being built, 4,000 that were delivered. These are 2022 numbers. And mm-hmm. then like another uh, t- 15,000 units that are coming to <laughs> the market. Insane. That's just Journal Square. That's just the area around that one stop. So you yeah, know, out in the west side where we are, we did an, uh, you know three active projects that were building. 365, 135 that got up, up that he's now trying to increase it to 180. These are development sites you sold? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then another one we sold for 135. He went back to the planning board and was able to increase it to 200. Um, right, right across the street. Not to cut you off. Yeah. They're they're they're, they're bringing in another 8,000 that are going to be moderate right along the waterfront. So it just it doesn't stop. It's Can just, we talk about some of these properties you sold real quick? Some of these sure. development sites. Yeah. So pick any one of them for example. But like what did what did you sell the property for? Um, and then what are they building there? And what what is like that going to look like when it's done? I can give you one example that I thought was was a pretty good story. Okay, and, and how the, how the market changed. So, we we sold one at at seventy Mallory, and it took a while. We were under contract for close to two years. That's not normal. What is it? It was it was a warehouse, and that was another thing, right? We love selling industrial properties, but a lot of these industrial properties, their highest and best use when you when you look at them through the numbers. The potential for them is it makes more sense to build a yeah. six-story, an eight-story residential property. So it's a warehouse, but it's really a development site. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that was a perfect example. It was an estate. We met them. We pitched them. They gave us the exclusive. We went out to market. People told us we were crazy. We we're never going to get the numbers that we got. We How much up, buildable square footage was it? Um, so that one was, uh, I want to say, 100. And they were under contract for, it was under contract for two years, and I just kind of let it go. But it was... Uh, <laughs> A hundred and fifty thousand. I want to say. How much did it sell for? So here, here was the funny part of the story. Right as we were under contract, a developer who I became good friends with was building six hundred units right next door to us, mm-hmm. and he was a perfect example of like the success that was going on. He leased as soon as he was finished, right next door to us, six hundred and twenty-four units in six months. That's if anyone knows anything about leasing, like the absorption record time yeah and got that thing stabilized and locked in a, a really good rate it was opportunity zone site and um, so he's not doing anything with that for a number of years we're right next door <clears throat> and we have 125 units and um i pitched him the site early on before he built what he built mm-hmm. and he was like you're crazy i can never pay that much i paid i paid twenty thousand dollars twenty five thousand dollars for mine i was like all right well we're we're here at you know 55 and i think it's a good number but if the market tells me I'm wrong, you know, I'll come back to you. We weren't wrong. By the time that he finished, he ended up coming back to us and paying, I won't say how much, but we sold our site and then we sold it again to him. And he paid more than what he could have bought it for originally. Yeah. So he was, uh, you he know. He saw the market changing. He, he, he was kind of, uh, you know, 
he, his own success caused him to uh, to have to you know pay more. I mean, Luke pointed out before before the, we started recording this that rents in I think it's Jersey City were up fifty percent. Yeah, well, there's one, in one year. It was yeah, like the, the, high, the metro, right? It was the highest metro area to increase. Li- li- living in the area, like I, I feel a lot of it has to do with the building stock, but also people coming from Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just I think you had from COVID had an and influx this, of everyone. who are these people. Young professionals, families. Yeah. But, yeah. but what I, I, Guy has said, right? Like he, what this is Jersey describing? City now we're talking about? Jersey City. Jersey, 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 Jersey is so no, big. No, I get it. But we talk about all these other towns and stuff, too. Well, so like, I just want to like clarify. Oh, if you say, like, it's a, if you, like, to me, if someone says Williamsburg, I'm thinking, yeah. like, Exchange yeah. Place. Got I'm it. thinking, like, uh, Grove Street. But, like, it, Jersey City is it, huge. There's Greenville, right? What's Greenville is like, yeah. flat, I would say it's like Flatbush. Greenville is Jersey City. See, Jer- Greenville's in Jersey City. <laughs> yeah. I would compare that to a Flatbush yes. or Lefferts Gardens. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, or, like off or the or parts like East New York. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah exactly. But, but you know like, I mean, so Jersey's like saying Brooklyn. Yeah, to, yeah. Okay. To give you a funny yeah. story, like I remember when I used to live in Tribeca. Yeah. And I, I used to like talk to my now wife, and I was like, I feel like every other person speaks a different language. Mm. Like they're all from all over the world. Right. <laughs> when I'm walking along the water in Jersey City, Hoboken, I one in five people are speaking a different language, really? and they're all from New York. Yeah. What yeah. he's saying right now, what he, what Yanni was talking about, like the land grabs and the buildings. Yeah. That was Williamsburg, yeah. Yeah. like in 2011, 12, mm-hmm. everyone was just yeah. building, and then developers would build, they'd get rents that they didn't underwrite at all, and yeah. they were way higher, and then they would, all the, the pricing was changing so fast, yeah. people would rent out buildings, be like, holy shit, I could pay a lot more, yeah. and then just more. You know, the, right. the, the, the other thing is, when you look at a, a develop, like a big development site, I'm talking about like 100 units, 200 units, 300 units, the land is just a small fraction of it, right? So, yeah, <laughs> if you're you're somebody that bought a property or you owned it for, your basis was like a million dollars, and now you're selling this thing for $14, $15 million, right? Like, yeah, you've made it. Zoning has helped you. You're cashing out. If you drop that price a million dollars, it doesn't really move the needle in terms of what the actual budget, like the whole pro forma. What's really moved these development sites is where the cost hard costs, soft mm-hmm. costs, and the financing. That's really what has been the meat and potatoes of these deals. So like we're, we've gone back, like I bring this up because like the, you've seen this appreciation in, in land and obviously was driven by the rents that have gone up, but it didn't mean anything to developers because they were able to build so cheap. Yeah. And they knew that they would get out and they'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to stabilize this thing and get out a, a three cap or, you know, be it uh, mm-hmm. an interest rate that's in the, the, high threes, low fours. Yeah, yeah. That's all changed, you know, and I don't know when or how we're going to get back to that. And, you know, wood will come down, steel will come down, concrete will come down, rents will now start to level off. The only thing that can come down with the way rates are is land prices. So that's why we're starting to see some pushback on land. And, and you can see Definitely. it everywhere. It's, yeah. It's, it's everywhere. It but it was always, it has been an alternative, cheaper option when you compare the market that you guys are in here to there. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is too, like I don't follow the statistics as much as you guys for for New York, but I don't see any new construction being built for apartment buildings. So in Jersey City or in New Jersey right now? No, no, no. In in New York. York. In New York. It's it's almost you can't pencil it out, right? Yeah, it's not a lot right now. If you're buying like let's say in Manhattan, you're buying land that was trading for five hundred, six hundred a foot. I've seen times go eight hundred. I remember when they were land was over a thousand a foot on like yeah. over in Nomad and Fifth Avenue, mm, and shit. they were you know they were selling condos for three thousand a foot and four thousand yeah. a foot. Like you can't make. I don't care what kind of apartment you create. You can't make those. You know, Jay Z and Beyonce aren't going to be the only people living in these apartments, right? Yeah. Like you can't have a rent that justifies those land values, mm-hmm. but you can when your rents are forty dollars and fifty dollars in. Jersey City or places in in Jersey. So I think that's why you've seen so many people move over. I think that's why you've seen guys that are strictly multifamily, uh, you know, uh, builders come and look at the opportunity here. Look at ground up? Because, yeah, because they've been shut down because of what has gone on here. Yeah. Can we I'll, talk about the um, the regulatory environment real quick regarding, uh, you sure. say, multifamily developers, but let's talk about the multifamily but, investors in general. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about, like, the va- like we do a lot of value-add work, yeah. right? We're selling, you know, vacant eight families or tw- or 20-unit apartment well, buildings. So a lot of these value-add Let's guys. roll back the clock okay. to when, before the, uh, the 2019 rent laws, when yeah. we had individual apartment improvements, and yep. someone would go and buy a six-unit or an eight-unit or, or a 40-unit yeah. in Brooklyn, 
at like a four cap, and then they would try to like buy out tenants and upgrade the apartments and and bring the rent to market, yeah. and then they would just add the value. Yeah, so, so those pre-war buildings, those twenty units, those eight units that you see all over Jersey City, yeah, you could still you get a vacancy, you can increase rents, yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful I, thing. Can't I, do that anymore here. I think what's what's happening though is like we sold a, a building to a, a you know, very smart, intelligent investor who's very active. As you know, he's actually got a ton of units in Brooklyn and he's, he's very sure active in, in Jersey. And uh, he was the top bidder. And uh, I want to say the cap rate was quoted at like four seven five. That's what he went into, and he was going to build it out to something like north of a six and a half seven. He was extremely happy with those kind of numbers, mm-hmm. uh, you know, before rates changed. Yeah, that was pretty much the standard yeah. going in <laughs> yeah. and underwriting yep. to to yields. So now you can still you can still go in and, and, you know, we call them vacancy capital improvements, right? Like you can go in, you can get a vacancy, and you can put capital improvements, and there's a formula specifically in Jersey City that you have to follow, right? So for the first $5,000 you spend – it's 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 complicated. So you get a certain thirty three for every hundred, and then after that. So basically, you spend eighty thousand. You can you can increase the rents. Uh, you know, four, five hundred, six hundred dollars. There's a like, formula. Like New York used to be. Exactly, yeah. exactly. A lot of these guys that I came think it's over, higher than four or five hundred dollars. I think if you spend eighty thousand dollars, you're increasing the rent by like over a thousand. I think after five thousand, yeah. you get like a dollar fifty five per. All right, we're going, so we're going the bottom line, you could yeah. you could get yeah. you yeah. to market. You could actually yeah. va- there's value at a place. Yeah. And they're getting sure the, <laughs> yeah. guys used to just you know if I was your broker I used to be able to go into the rent control office and, and sign it for you. Oh, right? and like another, there was another it was, thing. Though, it was the Wild West. You and had the vacancy too, right? It's based on vacancy. CPI. So like yes, you, yes. so yes. you get that bonus. Oh wow, well, like vacancy another. bomb. <laughs> New York used to also have that. The yeah. thing is too, like what Steve and I and Derek noticed early on when we started looking at Jersey. We see a lot of the similar names, right? Like we call it like the founding. Like we, when yes. I started in brokerage, like the founding fathers of Brooklyn, right? Like these are the early investors that you know they, they bought. They were buying in Bushwick, and no one wanted to buy in Bushwick. They're buying in Crown Heights and Prospect Heights when no one was doing it. Yeah. And these are the names that we're seeing all over Jersey City. Yeah. So that tells you something. Yeah. And we saw the same thing. You know, we w- we were following deeds and, and looking at addresses, and they were all going back to Brooklyn. So, <laughs> you, you know, one ninety nine Lee, one ninety nine Lee, exactly. five four three. Bedford. I remember the first time, like, how do so many people live in this little building? Yeah, you know, good. how many yeah, PO yeah, boxes? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> five four three Bedford's another one, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> what I what I think or what we see happening, and you, you listen to the people that talk at these city council council meetings, it's like this. Here is an example of what's not working. How the, what they're doing here in New York and, and, and the mess that it's creating for people. Yeah. It, it, renters, it, it just everything. It's, mm-hmm. it's driving people to get out and to yeah. live in other places. Yet you mm-hmm. have some of these places in Jersey now that are, are basically saying, yeah, we want to follow the same thing. Union City is a perfect example of that. You know, Oof. that that mayor and that council has that almost like, yeah, we're closed for business. And Everyone can, says can, Union City, stay away. Yeah. Right? I, it's just very... I don't want to say it's tenant friendly because it's not helping improve the stock for the tenants. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like I, I have a very different. I mean, it's probably I'm, I'm I'm biased because of the position that we're in. But you know, you would think that you want to create a better standard of living because people are going to want to adjust to that. They're going to want to try and figure out how do I how do I improve my how do I make more money or how do I how do I do whatever I need to do to get into a better place. Absolutely. If you leave them constrained, they're just going to you know th- th- this like is crap. it for the rest of for the rest of our lives. And yeah, I mean, Union City, those markets, that was the one other thing that we didn't talk about is, um, I don't know if you guys ever looked at this, but the density, the amount of people that live in that part, this, this area of the world, it, I think it rivals like Bangladesh, India, in terms of like the population per density. It's one of the most densest places on earth, which is crazy to What's think that, about. New York City? Union City. Union City. Places in Hudson County, the, the whole market there in terms of like the amount of mm. people Google it when you go back, right? Okay. Google Google the, the the most densest places in, in in the world, and you'll see the the market over here has some of the, some of the most dense places, definitely wow. in the United States. That's so crazy. it's crazy how many people live here, and it's crazy how many people are continuing to come here. And uh, kind of mm-hmm. got off a little topic with that, but yeah, I think a lot of it has to do. You were saying regulatory because of that. Yeah. So I hope they don't continue to to change it. The other thing is, like we were saying before, we have so many different municipalities that allow you to still continue, that are open for business. You know, you can go into Harrison and Kearney in these places, buy a building, tenant leaves, you want to you invest in it, 
beautiful. Yeah, you what's can. this car- Carney? I'm sorry, I don't know anything really about it, but yeah. a lot of the Brooklyn, quote unquote, Brooklyn investors that are in Jersey City, Carney, send me Carney, Carney, Carney. A lot of my Portuguese friends would be upset yeah. that Harris you don't know where Carney is. Well, listen, people are buying, people really want, why do people want Carney so bad? I think people want Carney because it's just another example of a town where, you know, it's got a strong rental base. Okay. And it's great population. You know, it's like good quality people that want to rent and that you can go in and improve a building there and increase the rents without having, you know, some submitting permits for, you know, vacancy capital improvements. Yeah, there's no rent control, right? You exactly. charge whatever you want, yeah. A lot of these towns, they just don't have the infrastructure in place in, within their within their municipalities to even, you know, regulate that it's kind still, of like, thing. It's like old school New York. It was like New York used to be, 2012, 11. Like, it wasn't like you could get buyouts. You could improve yeah. apartments. Yeah. Buyouts also, I mean, that's a whole thing we probably shouldn't really get into, but like... Yeah. From what I understood, especially a few years ago, buyouts in Jersey City were, were it was like buying someone out in Brooklyn in yeah. 2011. hundred percent. It happened. 100%. Because somebody had the biggest issue with Brooklyn, like in, before the rent loss changed in 19, when you could actually do value add plays. Yeah. Buying out someone wasn't just about the money. It's like, where's that person going to go? Yeah. The, if they're mm-hmm. going to move, yeah. the, the apartments are just, they're so expensive. They can't afford it. They have to stay. It's not about, you know, a $50,000 or $100,000 buyout. Jersey, you could get bought out of your apartment yeah. and go find another apartment a few blocks away. I can't imagine being being someone that lived in a place in like 2019 and just saying like, 2020 is my year, I'm out. Yeah. I'm gonna get this big buyout, my landlord's been talking about it, yeah. I'm gonna cash out. <laughs> and then like overnight that disappears. Like In New York. 100%. Oh, it disappeared. 100%. And you the know- tenants kind of the, 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 ten, the tenants probably were like looking at like their, their balance sheet, like their net worth. Yeah. And like one of the line items is like, like, one you more know, year. Yeah. like apartment one, <laughs> apartment two R, Two hundred thousand dollars, like the the buyout offer they got one day, and then boom, up in smoke. It's there crazy. goes their entire balance it's, it, sheet. It's absolutely yeah. crazy. And, and 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 how they thought that was a good thing to say, okay, well we're going to eliminate that from somebody at least having the possibility to get that is nuts. But you know, I think in twenty nineteen at my old place, that was actually the year that I I I joined with them, and we sat down, we looked at a huge map, and they were trying to, you know, we got this territory open here in New York, and this and that, and I said. I'm going to end the conversation right now. I want Jersey. If Jersey's not uh, an option, yeah. no thanks. Because I, I, we were talking about it. Everybody was talking about the changes that were coming. The rent loss. Of course. And mm-hmm. I just said, I don't want to be a part of that. You know, And I and obviously, I was I was very biased being from Jersey and yeah. loving Jersey and growing Most up Most people there. from Jersey are biased to Jersey. Yeah, I, I was going to say. I was going to say. You can find people that are from Jersey that really can say anything bad about it. We've got amazing beaches. we got... Yeah. We got mountains, right? People from New Jersey never had a bad thing to say. People from New Jersey, Jersey never Shore, had to say about New Jersey. Except Jersey Shore, the, the show. That was the only bad thing that we could well, say. Show. None of them were from Jersey. That's all. true. There you go. That. He's getting defensive. <laughs> yeah. He's getting defensive. It's absolutely right. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we have amazing bagels. I could go on. Oh, amazing bagels. <laughs> go down to Liberty Bagel in the office. Tell me that's not the best bagel you've had. You can get that bagel in Jersey. No, but... Um, you know, from 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 a real a real estate perspective, it's yeah. I, I think it, it makes total sense. I can't and disagree. Correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like velocity of sales mm-hmm. is not quite there in Jersey. Like you don't see as many deals. Like we talk Plus about these things. comparable Brooklyn neighborhoods during like the height of the the smaller multifamily market. Less sellers, maybe. Every week there'd be at least one to two hundred sales yeah. of multifamily six to ten, six to twenty yeah. unit buildings. I'm lucky if I see 20 a year yeah. in Jersey City. Yeah, I, 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 I don't I don't know why. I mean, there was <clears throat> huge amounts of portfolios that traded where it was big, 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 yeah. big blocks. Those happened, it seemed like, once every you know couple of years. But you're absolutely right. Um, from the stuff that we focus on, which is kind of like the middle market mm-hmm. space, Hudson County, Bergen County are similar in terms of the amounts, the transactional volume year over year. It was approaching close to a billion dollars. Bergen County is obviously much, much bigger. But if you look at the numbers, J- Jersey, uh, Hudson County was getting close to about you know seven hundred million, eight hundred million per year. I think with what's happened lately, we're gonna. I mean, across the board, we're gonna see transactional volume dip. I think people are just gonna be kind of either stuck, but like we know our business, people always have things going on. They're moving. Somebody passes away, so there, there's going to still continue to be that. But I mean, I give you guys all the credit for that. Was the one thing that completely impressed me was the amount of volume that you guys continuously, even even this year, continuously yeah. do. 
we just don't we we don't see that. And and I think for for us, kind of some of the stuff that we do, there's a complete different mindset. New York is like no bullshit. Like here's the deal. There is no you know extended uh, due diligence. Like yeah. take it or leave it. There, everyone's soft. Everyone needs some time. Oh, they're a tank need, uh, under the underground tanks. I used to hear this. Can you hold uh, firm on that and be like, no? We try. I mean, yeah. we, we try because we're representing sellers. So we obviously want to try and get somebody the best possible deal with the best possible terms and get them through as quick as possible to a closing. I just think it's like the culture there that's so used to, uh, you know, oh, I got to have my consultants. I got to have this. Well, I got to invest. What, 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 he says something interesting. I mean, this it is true. Like, well, we... We were involved in a deal in Jersey City a few years ago. It's just, my, uh, with the attorney that I was speaking to, like, oh, well, what about the underground tank? And I was like, what do you mean underground tank? He goes, oh, you gotta, in the contracts, you gotta have time to review, make sure there's no underground tanks. Yeah. Like, don't you, he's like, don't you have that in New York? I was like, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard of someone getting due diligence for like an underground tank. I'm sure yeah. they're there, but no yeah. one talks about it. Uh, Jersey, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. There's definitely steps to buying, or maybe, yeah. but it's probably getting more competitive now. Now it, that, it, that should be done before you sign a contract. It is that in Jersey. They they have to. Why do you tank? need time to see if there's an underground <laughs> because, tank? There's a piece of paper that you get from the seller saying if there's an underground no, tank. I think it's, just, it's, it's more just common. It's just it's more common. It's just customary that you have to resolve the issue. Yeah. So yeah. that the seller resolves this or underground someone. tank. So it's like if it's there, it's going to because the bank gonna, won't lend if there's an well, underground there, tank. I think it's in, in, in Jersey, environmental. It's more it's more it's more common to still have these. Underground storage tanks, right? New York. What's the issue with the underground storage tank? I mean, they could be leaking. It's, it's environmental. Yeah, it's environmental. It's environmental. Yeah, banks care. It's going to come up on a on a phase one. Bank wants a clean environmental. Yeah, and like New York, no one even talks about underground tanks. I'm sure there are underground tanks, right? right. <laughs> there are. One would, be. one would think that they used oil at some point yeah, in time yeah. in a lot, a lot of these buildings. A lot of nights in New York are, are above ground. <laughs> That's yeah. the so thing. You, so you walk into the basement, you see the tank. It's yeah. above ground. It's yeah. on like these poles. Yeah. 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 So um, poles, yeah. yeah. Here we we like the dead Fortunately, bodies. Like, we used to just hide them under the ground and <laughs> yeah. out yeah. there. So exactly. some some of the oil tanks in New York are in like these huge cement, like Correct. It, it, like like, uh, in, like encased in cement. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's like weird stuff. What were you but, um, saying before I cut you off? No, so I just want to know, like, so you have due diligence in New Jersey, like, mm -hmm. like, I'd say when so we sell a deal, we have no due diligence, so the contract is hard. <laughs> yeah. And my experience is ninety nine percent of the time. The transaction closes and there's never any issues. Yeah. But if there's if there's a soft period, you're signing a contract. Yeah. It may or may not go hard. Yeah. So like, what percentage of those deals fall out? It depends on what kind of deal it is. You know, if it's a development site, it's very complex. Does it have approvals? Does it not? You know, no no two deals are the same. But I think the terms are what separate the men from the boys. And for us, it's always our job to try and distinguish who's serious, who's mm -hmm. not, who wants to put up some hard money because. Obviously, no real seller wants to sit there and just let you think about it for yeah. whatever period of time yeah. and have your cons what are your consultants doing? I have no idea what your consultants are doing. And as a broker, it's the last thing you Ugh. want to, yeah. to take the property off the market and wait That's 30 days. Going back originally, I never chose to sell a lot of development sites. They take a long time. There's a million different things that could change that could happen. But it was just what we were kind of good at. We could just kind of figure it's like, like, hey, yeah. you know, we're good at this. For us, development sites, it's a big part of our business, and it's it's because it's, it's, it's pretty easy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we, know that we obviously know the buyers, right? And there's a lot of money. There's a lot it. of money chasing. Like, That's a site in Williamsburg, we, we, we sell a ton of that stuff. Yeah. And it's it's easy, yeah, right? It's, like it's different. Sometimes that they'll get we'll be able to get like a phase one, but they sign a contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's maybe some stipulations if it's dirty, whatever, right? Yeah. But these deals go quick. It's yeah. not like mm -hmm. the zoning. You need to know your zoning. Yeah. You, there's surveys. You'll get a survey after you sign a contract. Like, yeah. you'll do your own survey. Yeah. Sure. There's not... It's... Yeah. New York's different. Yeah. I'll give you that. It, 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 is, it is totally different. And, um, you know, we sell... We just took to market a, uh, a 43,000 square foot industrial warehouse in the Ironbound section of Newark. It's an exciting deal. And, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's, it's a great deal. We've already had... <laughs> we've already had some interesting buyers emerge that kind of synergistic users in, yeah. the, in the existing user. Mm. But from like an environmental standpoint, it was a very clean use, what they were doing there. They were taking some products that were being used for cowboy hats. Uh, so it wasn't like they were, you know, mixing chemicals and all of this other stuff. So, um, and then it has this underlying opportunity at, in the future for, for residential, like mm. a lot of these industrial sites do. So, um, you know, that type of, that type of product is kind of, that's that's like our bread and butter. I mean, the composition of the assets that you see in Jersey, it's a it's a lot of that. It's like it's industrial. It's a lot of mixed use with like you know retail on the ground, very similar to what you guys have. Yeah. 
And then there's just, you know, your multifamily office, unfortunately, is having the same <coughs> story that, um, you know, you're seeing here. A lot of the suburban office uh, assets are just are getting killed. You know? That's a, that property that you yeah. have in Newark. That's a. I took a look at that. I mean, for the money, that's a big piece of property. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot of meat for seven. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Seven and a half million. Yeah, yeah. I, and you know, we got a motivated seller. He wants looks more like ten million or eleven million. It's a big piece of property. We're out. Yeah, out yeah. here. You're saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I think I think we're we're gonna we're gonna move that thing quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's other stuff that that's like that. Industrial hasn't been uh, immune to what's been going on with. With interest rates, though, for sure, you know they've, has. they've also a lot of the institutions that were buying stuff at crazy caps. They've all started to kind of step back. I think guys probably lost some of their jobs mm. for what they were paying for stuff over the past couple of years. Yeah, those those values have completely diminished. Yeah, like the big tenants, like everyone talks about, like Amazon, and uh, yeah. aren't they like kind of yeah closing up a little I think bit? I read the same stories that you do, and I hear yeah. the same thing, and you start to hear these stories about, um, you know, they're stepping back or they're starting to slow down or walk away from certain sites. So, I mean, we'll see. You yeah, know, this is. I was on the phone with a guy earlier who's saying that industrial is in incredibly high demand, and it was basically in Jersey. Yeah, well, in the New York City region, but but Jersey. For sure, he was saying that there's very large industrial sites out there, mm -hmm. um, and there's there's not a whole lot of industrial in the region. He thinks there's an undersupply of industrial property. Well, a lot of the stuff that you know you had mentioned to me before, um, you're just seeing it get converted into residential, and that's been Got the story. It. That's been the story for for uh, for Hudson County. A lot. Brooklyn's a, it's a story. Yeah. Yeah. All the warehouses, if it has our zoning, we're selling it to a developer. If it's not being aware, it's warehouse is gone. Uh, not Flatbush, right? Like, I remember Bushwick when I went Same there thing, Bushwick? years ago. That's all it was were, were these, like, industrial warehouses that that's owner still, users. That's still there. Yeah. Well, some of it's, like, zone M, like, M1-1, M2-1. Like, you really yeah. can't build there. New, New York has industrial zoning districts. Yeah. Yeah, that, if you go to anything that has industrial zoning still in Brooklyn, yeah. it's going to look like that. New, yeah. New York City, the whole New York City. Yeah, but if you go to, like, Northside Williamsburg where there's residential zoning, those warehouses are gone. Yeah, gone And now sure. it's just... Big buildings. One interesting thing that we saw was how, um, and this this usually wasn't the case, right? But this is kind of what's happened and now how it's changing again was owner users would always pay a premium for like an industrial space. They need it for their plumbing supply business or mm -hmm. whatever it is. They, they're going to pay more than an investor will who can rent it out. That wasn't the case. Investors were coming in and outbidding owner users, which is kind of backwards. Now it's shifting back towards that Same as, thing with the, as mm -hmm. the investors are now kind of looking and saying, hey. And owner uh, user in Brooklyn, will blow, like they, we just saw one trade. I mean, they have their business, they'll blow out an investor now yeah. in Brooklyn. Yeah, that wasn't the case two years ago, you know, a year ago. But now it's starting to shift back towards that. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I think we touched on a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, we definitely did. Right? Mm-hmm. That was a success. My mouth is dry. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, so is mine. Um, Apologize for talking too um, much. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think there's a whole lot more to go over here. There's some like nuanced stuff, but it sounds like Jersey in general is like very nuanced. So yeah, all the towns and the different regulations and the different yeah. structures and municipalities. The, the and one thing I will say, obviously, you know, if anyone who's listening to this they want advice, they should obviously you know give us a call. But mm -hmm. just the most important thing, especially when you talk about the residential with the different laws and all of the different municipalities. You got to talk to somebody that knows what's going on yeah. with the actual rent laws because they are so different in each town. You cross over into one municipality to your next, it's a completely different standard, uh, it's, you know, generally speaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just have somebody that you know that knows their shit uh, before you start taking advice from For sure. whoever it is. Well said. I completely agree. And uh, thank you guys so much for All right. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> great. We're excited yeah. for the Thanks, Johnny. Johnny. And, uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. For the future. Cool. All right. Okay. Until next time. Thanks.